Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 4 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called Aristocracy, Democracy, and System Design. But before we look at those in particular, let's talk about something called conceptual integrity. Mr. Brooks explains this term by way of analogy in considering the Cathedral of Reims. There is a certain architectural connection in its parts that is not present in most other cathedrals, which is evident by the aesthetic that has remained unified over centuries of construction and renovation. By contrast, other cathedrals over the centuries tend to be refitted for the contemporary times, which the author suggests makes the building as much an outlet for the pride of the builders as it is a testament to the glory of God. This type of unity or disunity is seen in software programming as well, and the author asserts that conceptual integrity is the most important consideration in system design. It's so important that we'll be spending this and the next two chapters on it as well. To achieve conceptual integrity, we have to take into consideration and balance several things. The first is ease of use. The second is level of functionality. And the third is straightforwardness. What I mean by that is that you're creating functionality in a software. You can make a lot of functionality relatively quickly, but it takes much more time for it to be integrated into existing software seamlessly and organically. This is what I refer to as ease of use. How easy is it to work with on the development side? And on the user side, how easy or hard is it to understand the correct usage? That brings us to the concept of straightforwardness as well. Ease of use, simplicity, and straightforwardness aren't the same thing. And one example I can think of for a product that is simple and easy to use but not straightforward to use is hotel room coffee makers. They tend to only have one button and maybe one LED light. That's both simple and easy to use, but at the same time, end users still tend to stumble on this a little bit, as actual usage is sort of murky. Do you just load the water in and push the button once? Do you push it twice, once each before and after the water is heated? Does the LED light indicate that the coffee is ready or that just the hot water is and it's time to load the coffee grounds? A morning in a hotel will usually cure me or any hubris I get from thinking that I'm smart with using machinery. By contrast, think of another product with one button that also has ease of use and straightforwardness. For example, a rideshare app. When you open the app, there are form fields for your pickup and drop off location and one big button that calls the car. The learning curve is very short and chances are when you downloaded that app, you used it right the first time. So now that we have a sense of what conceptual integrity is, it seems reasonable to infer that architecture is best done by one or as few people as possible. But at the same time, it's not exactly realistic to expect that one of few people will actually implement and build large-scale software. So the architects are there to create the broad plan for software and up to the individual contributors to make specific decisions on implementations as they go along. Generally speaking, the architect should prioritize the end user to the greatest extent possible. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it and found it thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.